Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. One of our favorite segments, Garage Ed, which means we get to wear these cool lab coats and scan for codes. We got a P0335 here, which is a crankshaft position sensor code. So I gotta dig in and figure out exactly what's going on while John shows you how this whole system really works. That's right, Brian, things are starting to crank up around here. Yeah. You get it? Oh, never mind. We're talking about crank sensors. There's a couple types of crank sensors, and we're gonna look at all three of them. We're gonna start here with an actual digital one that's a Hall Effect switch. Now, how does a Hall Effect switch work? Well, I got one right here on a board for you guys to see at home. This thing down here is the crank sensor. Now, the crank sensor picks up these little teeth as it goes around on the crank and actually interrupts with the little slit right here as it goes through there, and it turns on and off, on and off a DC voltage. Matter of fact, I can show it to you in action. If I fire this thing up down here, you look at our oscilloscope, this is actually a pattern, on, off, on, off. The faster I go, the faster and tighter the frequency gets. Well, what does that mean? Well, the computer looks at that and determines where the crankshaft is, also determines where to start the car. Now over here on our other one, I'll fire up our other oscilloscope here, so you can actually look at an AC signal. Now an AC signal is a little bit different, it's a magnetic pickup. It's located right down here, and there's a tooth ring that goes around. So with AC, if I fire up this one, you can actually see the oscilloscope right there, and I'm going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Just two types of sensors, different ways to measure them, but this one's pretty cool because this one has an air gap, a predetermined air gap. Now watch this, if I just barely touch the sensor and I move it back, boy, I'm just barely touching that thing. That's amazing. Spark goes away because of that magnetic field down there is becoming too weak for the computer to pick up. That's how you diagnose a no start condition. Now you guys remember this old guy here, LT1, pretty cool. You got this act pickup that went into the actual camshaft that driven on the front of the motor, the old LT1. This is actually a light emitting diode. It spins around, it does the same thing. Crank position sensors, tip for you, Cam sensor goes out, probably going to backup mode and run just fine. Crank goes out, you got a no start. That's why Brian's checking out the M45 right now. That's right. Well, what we've got here is a sometimes I'll start, sometimes I won't, and if I do, I won't run long condition. So we're gonna move on to some diagnostics with the crankshaft position sensor. Now, a couple driveway tips for you, a couple ways to do this. If you don't have a buddy to help you out, you might wanna get a scan code reader that has Bluetooth connectivity to an iPhone or any kind of phone or tablet so you can monitor the data as you try to start the vehicle. More about that in a second. For the sake of TV, we're using the fancy Genesis scan tool so you can see the data. Now, this sensor is really hard to get to. That's why we're doing this type of test. We're looking for any signature at all related to RPM. That means that crankshaft position sensor is doing its job. So Chief Tech Josh, go ahead, let's see if it'll turn over. There you go, 150, 163, all right, stop. Let's do it one more time so you guys can see this. Watch the RPM. Very good, thank you. The crankshaft position sensor is working, it's doing its job, but the vehicle won't start, something's intermittent. So our next stop along the way is to go check the wiring harness to see if we have a short somewhere. So diagnostics you can do in the driveway, get the right tool, take your time, get a buddy if you need it. John and Tom have even more tech tips to make this job easier. Tom, we saw the DC signal, the AC signal, man. Woo, all this fancy technology going on. Bottom line, they've been using this stuff for years. Right, yeah, we've been hearing since we were kids that, hey, these 1970s cars, they're too modern to work on. The 80s cars are too modern. The sensors for measuring positions of things have been around forever. Um, here's a, a sensor that uh, measures the position of the distributor as it rotates. And similar sensor is now on a newer car measuring the position of the memory seat as it as it goes back to its position that you've programmed into it. Now the first sensor, what year make and model was that? That, that was an 86 Mustang, and, and this newer one is a 2010 Ford Explorer, I believe, so. It's all about that magnetism. Right, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we saw that with the two different sensors, so you offer those parts. How far do you go back? Uh, oh, we, we go back before World War II. Wow. <laughs> so. Awesome, so we can get the old parts, the new parts. Don't be afraid of the technology. Just get on Rock Auto. They got all the parts you ever need at great prices. That's phenomenal.